Welcome back. Stasis 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, the knife I have in front of you today is the Reich Knives P671-CB. Oh, that's a mouthful. Just name them already, buddies. Uh, I picked this guy up from shop.gearforlife.com for $40 there. The only retailer that I saw these available at. They were the first to have them besides... Um, I don't know if you can even pick them up straight from Reich, but they're good to go. I got it in a decent amount of time. Uh, and I did a big, <coughs> a big no-no when it comes to reviewing a knife. When I got this knife, uh, I wasn't happy with the G10 carbon fiber laminate scales. They were a little bit blocky and they were really thick to my taste. So I went to modifying before I... I did uh, the review of this knife. So what you're seeing right here is I started modifying the original scales, but I didn't like that either. So I went with, bam, some OD green uh, canvas micarta. This is the original scale, kind of. Um, it was just a blocky scale. I, I CC'd them, and uh, I don't know if you'll still better see the original the original finish <clears throat> had that cheap look, kind of shiny, glossy. Let me see. Uh, you know, it just wasn't wasn't my cup of tea. And like I said, it was just a little bit overly thick. This is, let's see if I can get it. That's what they looked like before. I don't know how well that's coming in on camera. And I didn't like it. So I made my own and... It, didn't, it won't change up too much of the stuff for the review. So let's get into the specs and the specs that <coughs> that have changed. I'll let you know that. But for the most part, everything's pretty much the same. You have an overall length of 6.46 inches or 164 millimeters. You have a blade length of 2.76 inches or 70 millimeters. You have a handle length of 3 and 3 quarters inches or 95 millimeters. You have a grip area of three and an eighth inches or 81 millimeters. You have <coughs> a width in this direction, which didn't change at all, of 1.126 inches or 28 millimeters. And you have a, let's see, uh, Oh, the stock thickness of 0 0.140 inches or 3.5 millimeters. You have a behind the edge thinness of 22 thousandths or 0.59 millimeters. Now, <laughs> the stock weight on this guy is 3.67 ounces. And a lot of that weight is coming from this stainless backspace. So we'll talk about that more. But uh, let me know what y'all think about the the conversion I did on this guy. But let's let's talk let's talk about the knife. You have a, somewhat of a drop point sheep's footish looking blade uh, with an attractive top swedge. Kind of has that uh, Chris Reeve Insingo blade shape a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the finish is I think they would call this a satin. It kind of has that ceramic media blast look to it. Not my favorite, but there you go. You have a pretty high height saber grind. Um, your billboarding on this side, just you have the right name right there. Flip it over. And you have the blade steel designation, 14C28N. Great budget steel. And the model number P671-CB. And then I don't know what all this craziness is. And I guess that's the designer's uh, maker's mark. I like that. Uh, you have a perfectly executed sharpening uh, choil. Always love to see that. Huge bo uh, bonus points in my eyes. And the thumb stud somewhat stays out of the path. I mean, you, you kind of. It's about 50-50. The jimping up top is pretty much aesthetics in the open position. And then this divot. The only thing I noticed whenever I was pushing down on cuts, that divot, it allowed me to kind of get a little bit, you know, better grasp. Not, not too much traction, though. 
We have ambidextrous thumb studs, both sides. And uh, as, far, as far as deployment, this knife is uh, totally ambidextrous. And the way I look at this knife, <coughs> if you've been looking at all these front flippers they have out there, and you weren't sure if you would like the, the action or the feel, or you don't think you could, you, you didn't have the hand-eye coordination to do it, <laughs> uh, this is a good, a good start into it, uh, especially if you have small to medium hands. You know, at $40, it's, it, it's not, you know, you're not losing too much if you don't like it. But if you have large, extra large hands, I'd probably still steer clear of this because, let me show you, I, I have a medium to small hand and I have absolutely nothing left. You do have a lanyard hole where you can tie a lanyard to it, but for a front, front flipper, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it up if I had large to extra large hands. That's just me. Um... Like I said, it is a front flipper. As you can see right there, there's your tab. It has de good enough traction right there. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, on YouTube, uh, Blade Banter, named David, his came with an overly strong detent, which, you know, that's, that's the game you play with the budget knives. They're not always tuned perfectly. Mine came with about a 5 out of 10. I think he said his came for, with about a 7. And that can make it really hard to open, especially with such a small handle. But as you can see, I can get a good purchase on mine. And his didn't come as smooth as mine did out of box. Mine was a free dropper. But as you see, look, you get your thumb, I get my thumb right there and I just apply pressure upward, like just pushing straight up and it rockets out there. And I can still access those thumb studs and I can do the spidey flick. But uh, if the detent was dialed in any stronger, none of that would be possible. I, it would, I would struggle to do the front flipper. But as mine sits, that detent is perfection. So just know that. Maybe if you get it from a big seller like Blade HQ, you can ask them to check that for you. <clears throat> well, we're not going to talk about the handle scales, but they were, real, they were the G10 carbon fiber laminate. laminate. They look kind of cheap to me. They were very thick. I mean, these are pretty thick. Uh, but not nowhere as near as thick as that. Standard minimalist hardware. You have a Torx T6 right there, Torx T8, and decent decent hardware at that uh, are good, I'd say. You have a stainless steel backspacer with a geared pattern right there with a lanyard hole. One thing that I did like about this backspacer, and this is the only thing I liked about it, is that it did it raises up the handle right there, so it, it fills more of the palm. As you can see, it sits into the palm. You don't get much traction from this, but I, I do feel it does fill out the palm a little bit better. I, I had made a uh, a Cure Knight backspacer for it, but I removed it for the sake of the video, so I can at least have most of the knife <laughs> stop. And uh, it made a huge difference in. Let's we'll talk about that right now. This this heavy backspacer right there. It adds a good bit of weight, I think, to my calculations at half an ounce, which is a lot in a knife. And as you can see, it's very ass heavy. And whenever I put my Cure Knife backspacer in, it made this knife perfectly balanced at this forward choil. And it, like I said, reduced the weight to about a half of an ounce. Um, I would have loved to see them do this same exact backspacer in G10 or Micarta. Uh, G10 preferably just because of the rigidity of it <clears throat> and they could have left it just like that you know it would have been perfect but this is the knife as it is uh, you have a stainless steel liner lock and as you can see in there it's skeletonized to reduce weight and then then you add this so you add all the weight taken off was put back here <laughs> Uh, you can easily access that uh, lock bar, and it was the same with the stock scales. And you have traction, so where you can easily get there. And mine, as you can see, is super smooth. Uh, it's been a free dropper from day one. Uh, the, the thumb studs are comfortable. It also, which I hadn't installed yet, comes with this deep carry pocket clip that is tip up right hand only. Sorry about that, lefties. But as you can see, <laughs> look, let's, let's simulate. 
God, if, if I would have just waited, sorry peeps, but as you can see, uh, let's make, let me make sure that's, that's where it sits, so, you know, a good bit, good bit of the knife to disappear, just that little butt of the knife sticking out, not bad at all. Um, <coughs> carry, I mean, I covered just about everything I wanted to cover. Um, let's do some size comparisons, and then I'm going to get into a few nitpicks I have with this this knife overall. So let me get it focused up again. And this is, like I said, a rather, you know, not super small knife, but it's definitely, here's another front flipper, the Kaiser Feist. <clears throat> and these two are pretty much exactly the same size. So if you have a Feist, at least you'll know how long it is. This one is thicker and fatter. So this one fills the hand out a little bit better than the Feist, but you have an idea in uh, size. And this one's a good, way, way more expensive. Uh, the Boker FR. It's another one that's pretty much identical in size. If not exactly the same size, they're darn close. Uh, and then your grip area on this one is, is really comparable to this one. A little bit thicker here, but you get that same feeling. You see that same choil right there. Handles are the same size. You know, you just have a little bit extra width and a little bit extra thickness. <coughs> um, Let's see, you got the Tangram Vector. I'm lining it up with this line back here, just in case my camera's throwing an illusion. Vector's a little bit longer and uh, about the same thickness, I would say, or close to it. You got the Benchmade Mini Grip. And the Mini Grip's a little bit longer, about an eighth of an inch longer, maybe a quarter of an inch longer. And one more last one. Or maybe the last one, the Mini Sheepdog, Kaiser Mini Sheepdog, which is about a quarter of an inch smaller. Um, two other front flippers, <laughs> just to show you got so many different ways to do the front flipper. You know, you got this one with the high tang going up there. And you got the Boker Excalibur. It's got that rounded area right there. So this one is very easy to do the roll with the with the finger uh, you can't do that with this one <clears throat> mainly because the detent is a little bit too strong for that and you don't have enough handle to hold on to you know because it wants to come flying out of your hands you're I'm barely gripping on to that so you can't really they ex they did a good job executing that for what they're working with my favorite style of front flipper right here is on the booze blade smoke how it's canted back some and it's chamfered everywhere this one's just a uh, a dream to flip it's absolutely comfortable everything's dialed in perfect perfect favorite front front, favorite front flipper that's hard to say um, and then on the feist it's somewhat the same but you have this rounded spot right here it is still rounded here this one's just a good bit higher so I find it easier to get a purchase on this one you just put pressure you just put pressure on that flipper tab at the top and push back like that and it rockets out once you break that detent. With the Feist, you don't have as much going up, so you really, you have to be mindful of how you're pushing on it, and the traction on the jimping on there is a little bit better than the one in Feist. Uh, I've gotten used to the Feist, so I can do it pretty easily now. I can even do that, that roll with the Feist. Uh, so there you go. <coughs> Let's get into a few nitpicks and gripes I have with this. Like I said, my buddy uh, David from Blade Banter said that his detent came uh, overly strong, at a seven out of ten, which which is a huge you know deal, especially if you don't know how to adjust a detent and with a front flipper. So, you know that's just something you have to keep in mind. Um, Another thing, the the G10 carbon fiber laminate just seemed cheap to me, and it was a little bit blocky. It had a small chamfer going around there, but that's it. Everything was super flat. Um, the, the billboarding, you know, you already have this big Reich right here, and you got the logo, but why, why? You already, I mean, hold on, let me focus it, see if it'll focus. It's mad at me for talking. Okay, you already have numbers for the uh, model. Why in the world do you put that huge 
barcode or whatever that is on the bottom. I mean, he got the you got all this letters and numbers here, and then you got that. I mean, just put that maker's mark and uh, the blade steel and your company name and put all the other stuff on the box. Come on, people. But that's just a nitpick, not hurting anything. <clears throat> um, let's see. And to me, this knife would have been an absolute, absolute home run if they would have made it a little bit bigger. At least, at least made the handle a little bit bigger uh, just so, you know, it would fit more people's hands so everybody could enjoy this knife. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be the perfect fit for, you know, large, extra large hands. Uh, the blade, they could have made it just a little bit bigger as well. I mean, you still got a quarter of an inch, you got a quarter of an inch, uh, you know, to still be in that three inch and under blade restriction. But like I said, I'm fine with the, the blade being at 2.76 inches. Just extend the handle. I mean, right now you got pretty much perfect blade to handle ratio. So adding another quarter of an inch would have been perfectly fine. It wouldn't have looked, you know, crazy. And it would have made the front flipper a lot easier to use. And um, it, it, would, it wouldn't have felt cramped. I, I feel cramped. Um, and that's all, that's all I want to say about that. Um, and the last thing <clears throat> I just don't understand is putting the stainless steel backspacer. I mean, you're not going to use it as an impact device because it's not down here. Uh, you went through the trouble of skeletonizing, skeletonizing the inside of those liners. So you're helping to reduce weight. And then you throw this heavy backspacer on there. Um, I, I don't get it. I, and I do understand why they, they raised it up here, you know, to, to fill the palm better. That, you know, that's excellent job. But... You could have had the same functionality with the G10 backspacer, chamfered it up, made it comfortable. Um, you know, still you could have still put the lanyard in there to satisfy the lanyard people, or, you know, even to make it even lighter, you could have just put some standoffs there. But the G10 option would have been, you know, just as good, or if not better, and. It, it, it probably would have cost less too. I, I'm not sure the price of this deal compared to the price of bulk G10. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know sometimes what the decisions making, you know, thoughts are. I don't think it looks that great either. Maybe, you know, the contrast of these two, maybe that's what they were thinking. I, 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 I don't ever know it. Y'all tell me what y'all think. <clears throat> would y'all have rather a G10 backspacer to save the, to make the knife more balanced, to make it not as heavy and uh, still have that same functionality or standoffs, what would y'all have preferred there? How about the uh, the blade finish? I'm not a finish, of, I'm not a fan of, of blasted finishes. And this is, it looks like a ceramic media blast. Would have loved to see them at least throw that in the stone washer for a while. I can't, it doesn't look like it's got a stone wash finish on it. It looks just like a satin. Maybe it has a light, light tumble. I don't think so, though. Um, other than that, you know, overall, if if you get one without, you know, without that that extra strong detent and you don't have huge hands, I think it's a good buy. Um, y'all let me know y'all thoughts down below. <laughs> let me know what y'all think about the mod I did with the, the micarta. Everything's still really rough. At a, with a $40 knife, I try not to put too much time into it, kind of like, this guy right here, you know, uh, the time, the time and materials I put in here are, is way more than a knife. So that's why, you know, this is all still, you know, that's actually a marker right there, but my dog's about to bark. So everybody hope you're having an absolute wonderful day. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.